Good morning. You're listening to Power Talks with Beth Ann and Melody Sedstrom in the morning where talk is real. We try to make it real. Truth is in the talk and there is power in truth and we believe that power talks and we, uh, are always happy to be here with you. So, good morning, Melody. How are you today? I'm fantastic today. Thank you very much. Well, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. <laughs> happy Thursday. Facebook, Facebook calls it Throwback Thursday, and they throw all these old pictures, nostalgia on there, and I haven't done that for a while, but... Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm nostalgia every day. I guess that's a sign I'm getting old. <laughs> well, we're looking forward at Discount Gold and Silver finally creating a Facebook page. And I actually oh. was reading an article yesterday that Facebook, the Facebook will eventually be, you know, obsolete because, you know, it's it's just not the in thing for the youth anymore. I think you have more baby boomers <laughs> it's the grandparents so, trying to keep grand, up with the kids yeah yeah really it's a communication uh uh tool for their grandchildren and, and seeing you know the pictures that they post and and they can track them and so forth so it's kind of interesting um uh, well yeah that was going around it uh well the youth are more into instagram and snapshot mm-hmm. and all those kind of things that are now quick 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 you know and uh uh, I don't know if the youth are even on Twitter as much as they are on the Instagram and the Snapshot. Uh, but Zuckerberg, you know, the founder of Facebook, he's talking about running for president. And he's making some 50 uh, state tour. I don't know why he's not doing all 57. But anyway, he's making some 50 state. I was being joking. I was joking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I guess because he's not going to have anything to do, Facebook falls. You know, he's going to have to. <laughs> you have to be president. Have to have what else is as profitable as Facebook? Politicians. <laughs> they're pro- <laughs> Politics. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, well, I told you before we went on the air, I really wanted to make fun of Hillary. And I thought about I need to write a script because that's pretty much what she did. She's in this book. She's written her book, and she's explaining how she felt on the debate floor. And it's an audio book. It's audio. It's disgusting. (laughs) She talks about how Trump basically stalked her on the stage in the second debate. But I watched that debate, and of course last night I watched it over and over and over and over again. He didn't move. She cut across the stage in front of him on his side, not that they had to take sides, I guess, but his podium was on one side and hers was his on right stage hers was on the left and um she walked in front of him he stood there like a statue he barely moved and yet she's calling him a creep because he was practically stalking her and and following her across the stage and breathing down the back of her neck and the woman doesn't have an ounce of truth in her does she is she that you know they keep saying um uh, the, the the mainstream media and all these on the left that absolutely hate Donald Trump, they keep saying he's mental and he's unfit. This woman is mental, and this is what we would have had as a president. She's as phony as a $3 bill, and she lies more than a rug on the floor. I, I've never seen anything like it. it. It's just amazing to me. And shame on anyone who would buy her book and help support her. Shame on them. I don't care how curious you are. It's, I don't know and if I'll you saw you what, it all, that, the ma- it, all the mainstream programs, oh, they're just promoting that book like crazy. Oh, yeah. And, you know, oh, Hillary Clinton's book, you know, stalked, stalked by Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's a debate. You do what you do. <laughs> Or should I just say, grief. back up, creep? Grow up, get over oh. it, and move on with your life and not into our life. She has two grandbabies. Go spoil the grandba- grandbabies and leave the rest of us alone. Yes. <laughs> just go spoil the grandbabies and leave the rest of us alone. I, I um, you know, the mainstream media, they were ballistic yesterday, and they have fear in their hearts for their lives because the president just, he's sicking people on them, you know. That's what they think, that people are turning on them. No, they're realizing what a phony baloney they are. And, uh, you know, they, they've done nothing but call 
Donald Trump before he was president on the campaign. I know that he's he speaks harsh. I'm not going to say he doesn't speak harsh. His is usually the second hit, though, which is the one that always gets caught. Mama used to say it's the second swing that gets caught. But they have said nothing kind about this president ever, not ever, throughout the campaign and since he's elected. And uh, yet he's the one they claim to be the bully. He's the one that they claim that is uh, trying to promote violence in the United States. And I see it the other way around, and maybe I'm clouded, but I don't think I am. I've watched these things long enough, long before Donald Trump was running for president, and it isn't him that's doing this. The the left and the mainstream media are constantly pitting people against one another. And it, it's just amazing to me that anybody even listens to them. I, I don't get it at all. But, uh, you know, they, they're fearing for their lives, Melody. <laughs> they're fearing for their lives. And they... They went on and on yesterday about how he lied about them. He li- he read exactly what he said, and he read exactly what they said. There were no lies in it, except that they were twisting his words. And uh, um, the one thing that they're upset with him about, that I actually am not upset with him about, is that he said violence on all sides needs to stop. Well, apparently he wasn't supposed to call the Antifa group gang violent, but they were swinging punches and they brought pipes and whatever to the to the protest, <laughs> to the friendly protest, just like the neo-Nazis did. And who are the ones now that are continuing the violence and uh, going after the statues and, and doing all these things? It, it's not... It's Antifa that's keeping it up. They're the ones keeping it going. Neo Nazis did their thing and went home, I think. Uh, but it's uh, the mainstream media has gone ballistic. And I, if if Donald Trump has done nothing else, if the president has done nothing else uh, with his uh, tweets and his uh, constant going back at them, he's exposed them for what they truly are. And I hope the American people can see that they don't have to like Donald Trump, but they. Sh- Hopefully they can see that the mainstream media is not their friend. I always try to look at both sides, and Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I mean, you know, he's certainly out there exposing more more power to him, and, and, you know, this is not a a negative reflection on Mr. Trump. I'm not saying that at all. But But if you're you're looking at the rest of America, the sheeple Mm -hmm. that we call them. Oh, yes. And... I'm afraid that maybe in the manner in which he ex- is exposing them might turn them off more than open their eyes to see um, how the mainstream media is, is, is really the, the bi- one of the biggest parts of the problem along with the Democratic Party and see that the division that they're trying to create and how they constantly just distort and lie uh, about the things that are going on, so um, it is a disgusting display it is. on both sides. It is a disgusting it is. Dis- display, <laughs> just like there was both sides to violence. It is a disgusting display to see them going back and forth. Another part of me wants to say, well, he's distracting them while over here they're getting things done. Because you said yesterday, nobody ever talks about what he's actually what he's actually done. Doing. Mm-hmm. So just keep them over here and keep them distracted. Keep, keep you know, them distracted. <laughs> keep them, <laughs> keep them defending themselves. But this goes so much farther, Melody. And I, I, I have several articles here, and just reading, just reading the headlines tells you what's going on or how bad it is that's going on. This is a Clemson professor. Excuse me. He claims all Republicans are racist scum. You know, so we've gone it's from being deplorable to being scum. Ra- <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've just fallen down a notch. We're oh. no longer deplorable. We're just scum oh, on the earth. This is, this is what they're doing. And, you know, people are homeschooling because they're sick and tired of what's going on in the public schools. If And I'm talking to our listeners right now. Are you a business owner? Uh, do you run a business? Are you in charge of who you hire? Uh, 
Do you demand a college education? Maybe we should stop demanding college educations from these people and, you know, just give them an, an entry test to your business. There's only certain things they need to know anyway. Uh, this just kind of hit me this morning, and, you know, I'm thinking, well, most people will probably think that's a stupid idea, but we have an awful lot of people going to college and getting in debt that don't use that college education. Um, you know, right now, we've, we I know they keep saying we've added all these jobs, but it hasn't hit in rural America just yet. There is a little bit more building going on, but it hasn't hit in rural America just yet. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, the these college professors that are filling our youth with poisonous socialism, communism, uh, garbage, standing there calling the rest of us, if you even consider a, a view that's not liberal, that's not on the left, that's not socialist, you're just scum. We're a racist scum. And, uh, you know, they, they're... They, they'll devour their own. Have you ever noticed that? They devour their own even. It's, it's amazing to me. It's just, it's so disgusting. Um, CNN, uh, they call, uh, the white supremacist, anybody who voted for Trump a white supremacist by default. So if you happen to be a registered Democrat and you voted for him instead of Hillary, <laughs> you're a racist now. I don't, it doesn't matter what color you are. You're a racist. And, um, well, you know, today the UN, they actually have a racism committee. <laughs> it's like, really? I would like to Why not? Of- Why wouldn't they? <laughs> Why wouldn't they? But a UN committee tasked with com- combating racism has issued a formal early warning over conditions in the United States, a rare move often used to signal the potential of a looming civil conflict the racism committee part of the un human rights office they can issue a formal early warning to prevent or to help prevent existing problems uh, or to prevent a resumption of a conflict where it has previously occurred and uh, the un committee the committee urged washington as well as high level politicians and public officials to unconditionally reject and condemn racist hate speech, and they did that without mentioning Mr. Trump by name. They are alarmed by the racist (laughs) demonstrations with overtly racist slogans, chants, and salutes by white nationals, neo-Nazis, and the coup, and the coup, I was going to say the Ku Klux Klan. I was going to say the Ku Klux Klan. Just say KKK. <laughs> Promoting white supremacy and siding. So, um, okay. The U.S. warning marks the seventh such alert issued in the past decade. I didn't know there was six others. So, but, um, but you know what's sad? I mean, these were, I mean, it's the same type of warnings that Countries like Nigeria, Iraq, Africa, Mm. you know, and I'm thinking, mm, you know, we're in this, yes, I don't, and this is all out of control, you know, it's being blown up and so forth, but to say we don't have a problem, um, you know, we do have a problem, I guess, but to think that we get the same warning as countries like Nigeria, Iraq, and Africa, you know, it shows it shows our country in a decline. It it shows where we're at as a country, and it shows where we're heading. And it's and not it's, it's not good. It's not a good place. We're seeing so much with this this uh, terror about taking down all the uh, statues and monuments and I hear music I was looking for something but well we'll come back and we to wouldn't it have these that. problems if it wasn't steeped by these groups by the media by the various other networks yeah. yeah we're going into a break we better give the number we want to hear from you 717-300-1218 I'm sorry 717 717- 300 1218 You are the power in our talk. Give us a call. And Melody and Bethann will be right back. 
Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com Worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. And we have returned. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. We believe in truth. We're trying to bring truth and common sense to you. The phone lines are always open for you. We ask that you stay on topic. But other than that, the phone lines are open, 717 300 That's 7100. I'm sorry. I can't seem to say that. 717 300 There we go. I got it out. Can they're, you repeat that? What was that? Ag- what was that again? <laughs> seven one seven three hundred twelve eighteen. I, you know, going into the break, we were talking about the UN, and I just wanted to make sure I am no fan of the UN. As far as I'm concerned, we should pull our funds out of there. We probably pay more more billions of dollars to the UN than you know any other country in the world. And and I think as far as if you want to talk racism, you know, I think it's you know it, it affair, it's both it? sides, you know, to some degree that uh, you know, and just because we're you know, like you mentioned, oh, all Republicans or anyone who voted for Trump. Trump is a racist. Well, no, we're not. <laughs> you know. So again, Confused, I maybe. <laughs> again, I you know this this thing is is a lot of. Uh, uh, two, you could read this as the UN coming out. It's just propaganda, also coming from the liberal side, and it's. You know, you were talking. You mentioned yesterday when you worked for the bank. I think that's what you said. Mm-hmm. You worked for, and. Um, that uh, you were practically forced <laughs> yes, as an officer into of the, bank. Uh, mm-hmm. the United Way, mm-hmm. which is part of the UN. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that they had done that where I worked, but because I didn't actually work for that company, I worked for dairy outside that company for, as far as the, the uh, structure of it was. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to do that. I know they do that at my husband's place of employment. And the United Way is not a good thing. No. They may do some good things, but 
why should we support that? And, uh, you know, we used to collect for that when we were kids mm-hmm. on Halloween. <laughs> Do you remember that? It was usually around Halloween when you were taking the United Way cups around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were in the belief that this was helping poor children around the world. But And it may do some of that, but we look at what the U.N. does, and uh, it's it's not a good thing. There may be a few good things. I remember when they were trying to get it all put together, they couldn't even, they couldn't even come up with an um, agreement on a table. You know, I remember that. I'm that old. I am that old. But anyway, You're it's old. Uh, not a good I am old. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think we agreed we were the same age, I believe. But uh, oh, So you well, we can't be old because I'm not old. You're 28, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Pretty yeah. close, pretty close. <laughs> Even though I have a son that's 44, I'm just 28. <laughs> yeah. He was adopted, right? He was. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, um, I want to bring up, I saw this article today, uh, unless you wanted to go finish that topic. Well, I wanted to just mention as we were talking about about the liberals and the left and, you know, it, the Democrat Party uh, is not the party that I had. I had an uncle that was a, a, a Democrat, but it's not the same party that my uncle was uh, connected to as what the party is today. Yeah. It has gone so far uh, socialistic. And they brag about it, you know, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. They bla- they brag about it, and they will not call the United States of America a republic. They keep calling it a democracy, which it is not. But it used to be that the liberal movement, and this came from James Woods, and I think I, I read this to you earlier this week. This is Thursday already. The classic liberal movement in its day was based on human rights and dignity. But it's been hijacked, he said, and now it's a host for the parasite of socialism, and that's exactly what has happened. So if you have been or know of or were or your grandparents were were registered Democrats or what they called themselves liberals, it was because they, which I still think is wrong, I think we should have um, human rights and dignity for people, but not outside um the Constitution, not outside where you're you're forcing someone else to pay for something for someone else. And uh, but this is what it was. It was about um, an ideal where you wanted to just you know have human rights and dignity. But now it's it's all about socialism, and it is. It's a parasite, and I think a lot of people are still confused and and don't realize that when they're supporting somebody like Hillary Clinton, they're just voting because he's, they're Democrats. Mm-hmm. They don't realize what the Democrat Party stands for. And in that same breath, I want to say I'm not very happy with the Republicans either. I, just... I, believe, I don't believe that they're the same Republican <clears throat> Party that parents or grandparents uh, were akin to. Um, they're, they're both corrupt. They're both too big for their britches. And and they uh, it's all about career politicians, and it has nothing to do with we the people anymore. So that being said... The left is very socialistic, and the right is very globalistic. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's I don't like either one. Mm, neither do I. And you know, when we're talking about that we're being a, that we are a republic and the changes that we're seeing in America and so forth, Abdul El Said. I don't know if it's Said or Said, but Abdul El Said is could be America's first. Muslim governor. He's 32 years old. He's a doctor and he's running for governor of Michigan Hmm. and in the process trying to change U.S. politics. If he wins, he will be the first Muslim governor in U.S. history. Uh, He was speaking in Adrian, Michigan on Sunday in a public hall. A young local transgender man introduced him to the audience. And one of the first questions that he was asked that day was about Sharia law, mm-hmm. asking about his thoughts on the custom. And the, the rumors surrounding his faith 
are small but persistent, and they are trying to blame it on a handful of far-right websites preying on the uninformed and fearful about when you have a, a Muslim getting in politicians, how they're going to, you know, bring Sharia law into our own uh, governing uh, courts. And so he was asked about um, if he was governor, um, would he bring Sharia law to the U.S.? And, of course, you know what his answer is. No. Uh, he was asked, <laughs> are you a front for the Muslim Brotherhood to pervert American politics toward terrorism? No. And were you handpicked by George Soros? These are all stupid questions. Were you handpicked by George Soros to lead a vast liberal takeover of the government? No, he's never met George Soros. Oh, of course he was going to say no. And those were stupid questions. But what's interesting about this is, again, he was asked about bringing Sharia law to the United States, and he says no. But listen to his background. He's a Rhodes Scholar, a doctor, formerly a professor at an Ivy League university. He actually wrote the textbook for his class. Now, you know when he wrote the textbooks for his class, and he's a Muslim, you can understand the slant in the textbook. Um, right. They don't say uh, what Ivy League university. He is the former director for the health department in Detroit, the youngest in any major city. He's 32 years old, and he would be the youngest governor since Bill Clinton in 1978. Now, this is now his his campaign is based on not to take any corporate PAC money. Um, he's unabashedly disdainful of big money influencing the elections. Uh, he calls corporate campaign contribution bribes. He has pledged universal health care to all Michigander, Mich- Michiganers if it fails on the federal level. He's going to push to legalize marijuana. Mm-hmm. He's going to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And he's going to make Michigan a sanctuary state to find federal immigration law for nonviolent, undocumented immigrants. This kind of sounds like this is going to be the new Democrats' platform. It does sound that way. And, you, and, I, are, and it's, go ahead. And, and it's not healthy. I mean, how can you? Yes, he's not taking bribes. Okay, universal health care. How's that going to be healthy for Michigan? Raising the minimum wage to 15? How is that going to be healthy for the state, economically or socially? How is legalizing marijuana going to be healthy for the state of Michigan? Becoming a sanctuary state, how is that going to be healthy for the citizens of Michigan? And it's, he, and he might very well pull this off. He just might. You know, we do have some in, in the Senate and in the House that are, are Muslim. And, uh, well, we had the first, you, we had you, a president that was Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't confess it. Yeah. Um, did you, um, you know uh, Bill Federer of the American Minute. Do you know yes. him? Yes. Okay. He gave this to me six and a half years ago. It's a resolution for the Republican clubs to adopt. And this is coming out of a Republican Party platform of 1856. Let me share this with you. When you were, I had to scramble to find it when you started reading about that. A person is excluded from the membership if they espouse a political system, system, a political system which allows even one of the following. <clears throat> Beating a wife espousing a system that allows a man to beat his wife if she disobeys him. Polygamy, espousing a system that allows a man to have more than one wife. Punishment for rape, espousing a system that whips, stones, or inflicts corporal punishment on a woman who has been a victim of rape. Dress, espousing a system in which a woman not wearing a particular dress or covering in public is subject to discrimination, threats, and violence. Sex slavery, espousing a system which allows involuntary marriages. Age of consent, espousing a system that allows men to marry a girl who is under the age of consent. Divorce, espousing a system which facilitates men divorcing their wives without due process of law, such as by simply saying, I divorce you. 
alimony, espousing a system that denies alimony to a woman who has been divorced. Visiting rights, espousing a system which denies a woman who has been divorced access to her own children. Kidnapping of children, espousing a system which allows a father to take a woman's children to another country which has laws denying her rights to own to her own children. I'm sorry. No equality for women, espousing a system which teaches that men are more equal than women before the law in, con- in contradiction to the spirit of the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal. Name-calling, espousing a system which calls any race of people apes or pigs. Death threats, espousing a system that issues death threats on someone for leaving their faith community. Corporal punishment, espousing a system that cuts off parts of persons' bodies as punishment for crime. No honesty, espousing a system that advocates lying to gain access into a group, then using their membership to subvert the group. Pledge of Allegiance, espousing a system which disdains or discourages American citizens from pledging allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And it goes on. It says, Israel, espousing a system that refuses to recognize Israel's right to exist and or advocates killing Jews or other ethnic groups. And this was from 1856. What would happen if the Republican Club or the Republican Party had that as their platform today? Well, you know, when we talk about the Sharia and the Muslims getting into politics and becoming governors and, and senators and, and congressmen, their faith does not mesh with, with our values. Our system is based on Christianity values. And there's a conflict there. I don't care if you say you're not going to bring in Sharia law, you're not going to use Sharia. I'm, how can you be a true representative of the people if your faith is rejects the rule of law, the rule of law and our Christianity values, somewhere along the line, <laughs> there's going to be a, a, a conflict and a change. And what he's talking about, too, is his campaign that is reflected in his staff is a reflection of a different America, this writer says. A different America. You know so, what? Something that we value in America is that we are that melting pot. But if you cannot um, accept the rule of law, the Constitution, understand what the Declaration of Independence truly was, or the Bill of Rights. You know, they were interviewing last night somebody from the ACLU, and they're going to uh, not represent... Uh, a group of people, and I think it was the neo-Nazis, which I don't have a problem with that. But they, the, the problem is who they represent, not who they're not representing. They claim to be for free speech and all that, but they're not. They're not, and they're wanting to remove some of that. And, and somebody was backing them into corner about what they say they are and then what they truly are. Um, but the Republican Party has... Um, you know that this this particular resolution came from 1856, and it, it was talking about Sharia law. That's what it was talking about. Mm-hmm. So this has been around a long time. I want our listeners to know that this this is nothing new. What is escalating is the fact that we are not just tolerating, and we're not assimilating together as a group of people. But they're taking over. It's an invasion. When they don't assimilate, it's an invasion. They're trying. You can't go into some other country. Of course, we talk about that with these wars. And force your way of life on them. You can't go into a predominantly Muslim country and say, hey, I'm Christian. So when I'm in your courts, you need to go by my laws and my rules. It doesn't work that way. And it shouldn't work that way when they come here. And yet that's what these these liberal socialists are trying to make us believe, that we should be kinder and we should be accepting and tolerant. And, and they want to uh, point to Christianity and say it's the most intolerant when really it's the most inclusive, where it, it, it brings everyone in. Everyone is welcome. And um, 
you know, you have to believe certain things, but everyone is welcome to that. Um, but, you know, that just was astonishing to me when Bill Federer gave that to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's been six and a half years ago because it was right when I first started the CSC Talk Radio when he gave that to me. And I, I have kept it <laughs> so that I would have it and uh, go back to that every now and then when some of these topics come up because that's exactly <clears throat> what's happening now is the opposite of what this resolution was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I guess as things change, some things never change maybe, but, uh, um, but yeah, so those of you in Michigan that are listening to the program, um, you better pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah. Know what's and going because, on. You know, because he does talk about, <clears throat> he does talk about how the corporate money is, is, is influencing, uh, the elections. I mean, that's very similar to what Mr. Trump talked about uh, to get, and it is true. <laughs> and it is true. You know, and, and, you know, he goes on, and you know, he does talk about our forefathers. He talks about, you know, the things that you'd think, oh, well, yeah, you know, he does believe the way we do. He can't, not if he's a true Muslim. He can't, and not so. if he stands and believes in Sharia law. And and most people, and I don't know that I understand it either completely, Melody or listeners. But most people do not understand what Sharia law really is about. The woman is demeaned. I mean, we've heard them talk about they, they're not even allowed to drive in some of their countries. And um, the woman is uh, looked down on. She's considered a piece of property. Um, if she is raped, she has to have witnesses for this rape. Otherwise, she's the one who is in the wrong, and they can kill her, stone her, uh, torture her. Um They'll they'll sell them or take them as uh, as children for wives nine years old or younger. I mean, um, they are scolded or punished if they don't dress according to um, the rules of the Sharia law. Um, the men are allowed to have multiple wives in Sharia law, and they like little boys. They love little boys. Sex slavery is huge, and let me put yes. this out there: they believe in slavery. And they practice it. So when Carr is telling us that they're going to bring legislation, they're going to lobby for legislation in our government in D.C. with those career occupying, uh, I call them D.C. occupiers, um, don't believe them because they believe in slavery. As Muslims, they practice slavery. Now, maybe they're not doing that here. That religion and Sharia law believes in slavery. They think it's okay. If you, it doesn't even matter what color you are. If you're not a Muslim, you are beneath them and you are nothing. So it's okay to do whatever. And, um, and that's how they view women. And I don't know why women would stay in it when they have the opportunity to get out. But then there's a lot of women that stay in abusive marriages that should get out. And I'm not advocating people, divorce for everybody, but I'm just saying it's it's a, it's a strange to me that you would keep yourself. But it's their in a, culture, and they it, don't know true. anything else. It's their culture. Well, the ones that live here, we, know and, you know, and and we try to change everyone's culture, and we tr- and, and we we try not to understand their culture. Hey, they can have whatever culture they want, just don't infringe on mine. Right. You know, don't try to change mine. Don't come to the United States and try to change our laws. Don't try to. Don't try to change, you know, you know, our constitution. Don't try to bring in your Sharia law, you know. And it's horrible what they do. It is. It's horrible. Well, it's if you horrible. if you if you are caught stealing or robbery, they they remove your arm. They remove your hand. They amputate your hand. They cut it off. It's. I mean, that was part of the removing of body parts. <laughs> And uh, there's much, much more to it than that. I mean, that's a simplified version of what we're talking about. Let's talk about draining that swamp. Here we're talking about a governor that if he is a true Muslim, if he's a devout Muslim, then he believes in Sharia law, which is contradictory to our rule of law, to our constitution, to our Bill of Rights, uh, to the way we believe all, all men, and which includes women, are created equal. I think I mentioned, and I don't, you know, I get confused on our shows, which one I mentioned it on, whether it was CSF Talk Radio or here, and I think it was here that I mentioned one president, one man in the White House, whether it be whoever it is, 
has not been the person who has caused all these issues. Do I like some of the things that uh, uh, President Obama did? No. I don't like some of the things President Bush did. And I'm not going to like everything that Donald Trump has done. I'm, I'm still out on a limb on some of the things he's, he's uh, uh, pointing at. But it is Congress that is the swamp. It is Congress that is being bought and paid for by lobbyists in D.C. It is Congress that are the D.C. occupiers occupying offices and cutting deals. So the only way we can truly, and, and, and this is very, very simplified, it's not going to be simple. And it's not going to happen overnight. And this is one reason they hate the current president. He's not one of them. And we, the people, elected him. That's why they think we're scum. That's why they called us deplorables. Because we're not going with the flow of the Republican and the Democrat parties. But the way to clean, to uh, get rid of that swamp is to get rid of D.C. occupiers. We have to get rid of them. Now, there's going to be a lot of these people in the bureaucracy that are still there that you're going to have to clear out once you get other people in there. But does Michigan want to elect this man? Obviously, he's a socialist. He's on the Democrat Party. He's a Muslim. How deep is his faith in his Muslim belief? Is it for Sharia law? Is he going to promote that? He can't possibly, like you said, Melody, he can't possibly be against it. We have to start electing somebody as our representatives locally, in your state, your county, and all the way up to D.C., we have to start replacing them with people who believe in the constitutional republic. If they say the word democracy, walk away from them. But Judge Roy Moore is 18 points ahead in the Alabama Senate runoff poll. And I don't know for sure, you know, when this is going to be, when, when they're uh, September 26th. The runoff will be held September 26th. Will he finally get in there? I mean, he has been ostracized and, and kicked out because of he believed in the Ten Commandments, and they had that in the uh, courthouse there in Alabama, and they forced him to remove it. And uh, that's what he's known for. But he will stand on rule of law, I believe. I don't know. You know, that's the way we got to do it is to replace them, one state, one precinct, one county at a time. And I hear music once again. You're listening to Power Talk, Beth and Melody, in the morning, and we welcome you at 717-300-1218. See if I can get it right twice. 717-300-1218, and Melody and Beth Ann will be right back. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using Scripture to interpret Scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, 
Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. We have returned to listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. And we are here with you this morning. And, uh, we've been, you know, we talk about all these things and it, where there are distractions and they're all, they're nearing gossip, you know, when we talk about the mainstream media and how upset they are and Hillary's books. But we do have some real news. And, uh, I asked, uh, Melody if she had something going on in the financial end. And she said, yeah, she did. So I wanted to hear about that. Well, I think another reason all this is coming out more in the news about her debt ceiling is because the other night Mr. Trump said that he's going to shut down the government if uh, he didn't get his money to build the wall. So now all of a sudden everything is about the debt. Everybody's being pressured. Congress needs spending by September 30th to avoid a a shutdown. And um, so now Mr. Trump President Trump is tweeting out to both McConnell and Ryan about this debt ceiling that it needs to get done. He needs a a measure to raise the U.S. debt ceiling uh, in a popular veterans bill um, to try to avoid some sort of a mess in which they have to rely on the Democrat support. And McConnell and, and Paul Ryan, they've decided against tying the measure together. Um, Mnuchin, um, he wants a clean passage of the uh, debt ceiling. He doesn't want anything attached to it, um, but the bill would be passed easy if it was, or the debt ceiling increase would be easy if they attached it to the uh, VA bill, but uh, I guess that was just passed. And So, you know, you're going to hear more and more about the, uh, it's Congress's job of raising the debt ceiling, and Congress needs to pass a spending measure to keep the government open after September 30th, and you're going to hear a lot of this. And the problem is they can pass the debt ceiling, but that is only servicing the debt that we're already in. And they will. They'll and, pass and, it. I mean, they will pass it. Can it put our, our, our credit rating at risk? Sure it can. Uh, but they're not going to... You know, these credit rating comp- systems, it's just a joke. Mm. You know, just, just because they're not going to, they're not, look at Detroit. I mean, it took them forever to lower their, their, their credit system. Look at Greece. They don't lower their credit ratings because then they have a hard time borrowing debt to pay their debt. So, you know, it, it's, it's really just a cover up of just how severe financially Countries, this country, the United States, and countries around the world are financially, um, they're just so fi- financially depleted. And it's, and, and we, I hate saying this, it's just a matter of time. Yes. <laughs> but it is. Well, well, think about if you went to the bank and you borrowed X amount of dollars, and you go back next year and you say, I need X amount of dollars on top of that. And then you go back the next year and you say, I need X, you're tripling it, and then you're quadrupling it, and then it just goes on and on and on. It can't happen forever. Eventually, the bank's going to say, you need to start paying on this. And um, it's going to be, it's just as true with an individual, I mean, with the government as our D.C. occupiers, as it is with individuals. They think they're in control of it, but they're not. I mean, they're just raising the the issue. It's just going to get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And we do have, we have Oscar joining us this morning from North Carolina. Good Good morning, Oscar. Hello. Is Oscar there? Okay, we lost Oscar. We we lost Oscar. I hope we find him. (laughs) Why, you too. (laughs) It's good that we're lost and not him. (laughs) 
But um, so, yeah, we have some major problems uh, with our debt ceiling. They'll raise it. But again, we're bankrupt. It's that simple. When you have to go back and get more and more money because you can't pay your bills and you can't keep things going, you know that you're done. I mean, it's just, it's like you said, it's a matter of time. They can't keep going on and on. And, you know, (coughs) I can understand a temporary type, you know, a temporary raising of the ceiling, but it's every single year, Melody, as Mm -hmm. as you know, I'm not fussing at you about it. And yet nothing is ever done in between those two times to stop spending. No. They continue to spend and spend and spend. The Democrat Party wants you to spend more and more money on this and on that. They should have free college. We should be paying for that. Well, where's that money coming from? The taxpayers cannot possibly fix this debt. Absolutely not. It's debt that we can't pay. And I hear, oh, well, Mr. Trump has, you know, saved this amount of money and, you know, so forth and whatnot. What he saved is like twenty dollars if you owe a thousand. I mean, it's peanuts. Yes, the, the, I applaud the try. I applaud the, you know, trying to do something, but it's not nearly enough. And particularly with the, with the uh, tax reform that he wants to do so desperately, money has to come from somewhere. Yeah. You know, the spending isn't stopping. The re- you know, and if you if you if you reduce the revenue, you can't. It has to come from somewhere. And so I think we have Oscar on the phone again. Maybe yeah. he's there now. Good morning, Oscar. Good morning, ladies. There you are. Uh, Good morning. <laughs> I finally got through. Mm-hmm. Uh, two things. Uh, my first uh, remark is uh, to uh, tell you that I am so very, very proud of you two ladies for speaking up oh, and speaking you. the truth so eloquently as you do. I am so thrilled about that because nowadays most people couldn't even spell the word true. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank now, you, Oscar. My, we appreciate my that. My second remark is, uh, is, is in the reference to a, a, a suggestion. Your show is so good, too good to be only one hour. You should be two hours on the air. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything that we can do in order to uh, push that, please, I'll be so happy to help you out with whatever, you know, whatever capacity I may have. And uh, I, I am, uh, I am uh, so thrilled to, to listen to you every morning and hear the truth and all the topics that you touch are so, are so I mean, everything is there. And I only pray to God Almighty that people would mm. wake up and listen to you and, and uh, assimilate all these these things that you you tell him because it's absolutely the truth. Well, you inspire us, you know, uh, oh, oh, someone you that inspire that me sees. with your truth and your <laughs> you eloquently, uh, you know, speeches and everything. I mean, you know, it, it would be more clear just to put water on it. <laughs> mm. As my grandmother mm-hmm. used to say, if you want to make it more clear, just put water on. Oh, wow. So, you know, <laughs> this is what I want to say, and I will try to call back again tomorrow to uh, uh, talk about it, some of the things that you uh, were talking today. I realize the time is too short, and uh, I'll try to pick it up from uh, from there tomorrow, if you let me. <laughs> Absolutely. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, Thank you, you very much. Wow. <laughs> you know, sometimes we wonder, well, are we doing any good? That just uh, that really moves me. I thank him very much for that. I do, too. And, you know, we do these programs. <laughs> I've been around radio. We've had financial survival since 1995. We're one of the longest financial radio programs on shortwave. I became actively involved in 2004 in radio and it's, I know there's thousands and thousands and thousands of listeners out there. Mm. And like you, sometimes you wonder if you're really making, um, 
No. An impact or and a change or if you're encouraging or, uh, you know, I, I've been that way. If we're saying the right thing or yeah. the wrong thing. So thank you, Oscar. That was a very important and, phone and call. And we, we, one of us is two hours right here because <laughs> I will go in to, and you'll have to turn the uh, frequency to 12160. But, um, and then you'll hear CSC Talk Radio. And, and I have, um, I usually do a monologue. I've been trying to get that done and come in to, um, to tell the listeners exactly what we do here as well is to try and try to put some common sense into the nonsense that we see going on. And, and, uh, one thing I'm going to, you know, because I'm a rural America person, one thing I want to bring it, bring up is the bureaucracy that is ruining rural America. That is, it's t- there, there's land grabs going on, and and uh, the farmer out of the state of California that's he's facing a multi-million dollar fine for plowing his fields because he didn't get government permission. And we're hoping that uh, um, the new EPA director will come in and rescue this man. I met him, I've had him on the air, and he's a wonderful, wonderful, smart individual. He raises trees. Oh, I hear music. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're out for the day. We are. Melody, thank you for spending thank this you, hour Beth. with me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Oscar. We thank, and we thank Oscar and all you listeners that are sitting there listening to us. And uh, um, this is for you because we feel like you deserve a voice on uh, Power Talks. And we'll be back tomorrow. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built, That's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple Android device and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased. It has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit discountgoldandsilvertrading.net. 
Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. 